Today I'm gonna talk about histograms, I'm gonna talk about stem and leaf, and I'm also gonna talk about the shape distribution. What is a histogram? A histogram is basically a bar graph. Bar graph with no gaps in between, no spaces in between, and is used to represent frequencies of data within, within intervals. And your y-axis is always the frequencies. Okay, let's keep it very simple. A histogram is a bar graph with no gaps, no spaces, and is used to represent frequencies of numerical data within intervals. So the intervals are always on the x-axis. The frequency is in the y-axis, and intervals, so your your histogram looks something like this. A stem and leaf plot is a way to display data and you want to order from least to greatest. Alright, very, very important. Your stem and your leaf. Tens place, ones place. So I'm just gonna give you an example and say throw one, two, three. Okay, and then five, seven, seven, nine. Okay, so here's an example. These, the way you read it is, since this is the tens place and these are the ones place, your number, if you read it, will be five, seven, and seven, since the zero is the tens place. Here, your number will be 19, one in the tens place, and nine for the ones, that equals nine. You don't have any, any number, so your list of numbers will look like These will be your list of numbers, meaning that if you put these numbers back in the stem and leaf, you will have to do zero 05, zero for the tens place, and five for the ones, zero for the tens place, and then seven for the ones, and then you have another seven, and then 19, you will split it, one for the tens place, and then nine for the ones place. Have anything here for 20s, any number. Uh, you cannot skip it. You have to go in order. So you cannot skip and write zero, one, three. You have to write a two, but you don't have anything. So you just leave it blank. And three and four means 34. Three for the tens place, four for the ones, and 39. Three for the tens and nine for the ones. So that's how you read it. The last thing we want to also include here, we need to make, make a key. When they kept track of the number of text messages she sent each day for two weeks. She used her data for one and two, for question one and question two. So here's Wendy's text messages. Question one, complete the stem and leaf plot. Here we have it, uh, the stem and leaf. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at the data and determine where do we need to start. So remember the stem represent uh, the tens place, ten and the ones. So we have one, we're going to do one, two, three, four, and five. Then I'm going to cross out 15, a one and a five for 15. Tenth place, ones place, okay? So 15, we don't have any other... Okay, so my knee two zero, and the next one will be twenty four. So two and a four. Then the next one we seven. Oh, so a seven, cross it out. The twenty nine, two and a nine. That's it. No more 20s, right? Okay, now uh, I'm gonna go into the 30s. 30 is 30, so I'm gonna start with the zero. Then we have a 33. Three and three is 33. And then we have 34, 35, cross it out. Then we have another, let me cross this out. We have another 35. 42, a four and a two makes 42. Then we have a 46, a four and a six, two, which is let me, five and a two is a 52 here, okay? The key mean we have to add all the numbers and then divide it by how many numbers we have. I'm 35, 20, 46, six, uh, 29, 27, 33, 15, 5, 2, 27, 30, 35, 24, 34, and 42. And divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And 14, and that's 56. So your mean equals 56. The median is the number in the middle. There's two ways of doing it. You can either rewrite these data in order from least to greatest, or using the stem and leaf, these are already in order of least is 15, greatest is 52. So we can say the median is the number in the middle. So let's cross them out. One from the top, one from the bottom. If, these, if you're confused about this process, then rewrite the data from least to greatest over here and find the median. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do it both ways, okay? So that you can see it. So cross it out, cross it out, cross one out, cross this one. One from the top, one from the bottom. Top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. And we have two numbers. We guess these are the two in the middle. So that means it's 30 and 33. So 30 plus 33. 30 plus 33 will be 63, then 63 divided by two. Three times two is six, and two times three, two times one is two. So one left, decimal 31.5. Okay, we have the mean and the median. Now, you can also rewrite this data. This way is way easier since you already have them in order. Um, so 15, 20, 24, 27, 27, 29, and I'm just looking here. See, 30, 33, 34, 5, 35, then 42, 46, 52. Okay, they're in order, least to greatest. 
And then we need to find the median. So number in the middle, you can cross them out like this or do it with your finger. Remember I show you one, then I want 24, 42, 27, 35, 27, 35, 29. You see the same thing? 30 and 33, which we did it here. Number of home runs a baseball player hit in each season he played is shown in the stem and leaf plot. Okay, let's answer question two and three. How many seasons are included in the stem and leaf plot? What is the least number of home runs the baseball player had in one season? Five, five, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, seventeen, nineteen, and forty-four. Twelve. What is the least number of home runs he, uh, the baseball player had in one season? Zero. The least, right? Right here. Find the median and the mean. The median will be the number in the middle. They're already in order. I'm going to cancel, cancel, cross one out, top and bottom. Eight and nine, 17. If you add them, it's 17. 17 divided by two will be oh, the median equals 8.5. Your mean, you have to add all the numbers. 44 divided by 12. 11.75. All right, Kim has started rating each movie she sees using a scale of one to 10 on an online site. Here are her ratings so far. Make a histogram of the data what does the shape of the distribution tells you about Kim's rating? So the way we're gonna do it, if you notice here, the x-axis is are the ratings. These are the intervals from one to two, three to four, okay? But these represent the ratings. And then the y-axis represent the frequency to the frequency table, okay? So from one to two, I only have one. From three to four, and these are the ratings, this is the frequency, okay. So from three to four, we have one, two. Uh, then we have five to six, one, two. Three and to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine to ten. One, two. Okay, up to one. The next one from three to four, I'm gonna go up to two. You see how they don't have they don't have space in between, okay? From five to six, I'm gonna go up to three. Five to six, seven, seven through eight, seven go up, and the seven is two. Boom. And you can color it if you want, but. This is how you create that um, histogram, which is a bar graph with no space in between, no gaps. Okay. All right. Let me talk about um, data distribution. I'll be able to determine um about the shape of the distribution 
Center shape and spread. How can we describe data distribution? Outliers, data values that are much larger or much smaller than the rest of the data. So look at these two examples. First example, two, three, four, kind of consecutive, very close to each other, okay? But all of a sudden, 19. 19 will be the outlier because it's much larger than the rest of the data. That's the key, okay? The next example, 31, 57, 58, 58, 59, and 60. All of these are pretty close um, consecutive numbers, these two repeat, but this one is kind of separated, it's out, right? 31 is an outlier because it is much smaller than the rest of the data. Pick the highest point in the display or where you see the most data. I think I talk about the peak in one of the videos when I talk about the median and the mean for uh, or a dot plot. So this is an example. There is a peak at nine. And that means is the highest point. And you can say the mode will be nine, right? Clusters, groups of data in the display. So let's see. Here we have a quiz course and the stem and leaf. So this is just the tool that was used. Mm -hmm. um, so here, there is a cluster of data between 70 and 99. 70, 99, the last number. You know, you see how they all like crowded? That's what cluster means. And then here's another, this is 32. So there's a cluster between 70 and 99. All of them are here, down here. All right, so symmetry. Symmetric, there are about an even amount of data on each side of, of the middle of the display. So here we have dot plot. And if you look at it, it's pretty symmetrical. It's kind of like, uh, looks like it has the same amount or even amount of data on each side and kind of like the peak will be at five or the mode, you can say that is five. It's the number that repeats the most, right? It's repeating one, two, three, four, five times. So, yep, that's what it means. If we have to describe it, it means like it's symmetric. The next one is a skewed left, to the left or skewed left. And a skewed means the tail of the distribution, like this tail. So a skewed left, you said when the when the distribution looks something like this, less data points on the left of the middle. So if you look at it, it kind of goes like, oh, there's not many points on the left. So it goes like this tail, it goes down. That's showing. So that's what it means. And then here, skewed right, less data points on the right of the middle. So the points are here. That's the mode, the number that's repeating the most, median, the mean. But then we describe it as a skewed right, which is less point, less points on the right of the middle. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you still have questions about data distribution or anything about central tendency. This is the last week of central tendency. Next week, we're going to start talking about debit cards, credit cards, and all these finances and um, checking account. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye.